Hello traders, welcome back to the price action and volume trader channel here on YouTube. Today I'm bringing you another educational uh, trading technical analysis video. This one I want to just talk about a very specific topic that I think from the comments I have gotten in my previous uh, footprint videos here on the channel. I think this is something that I just want to clear out and make a, a basic explanation of what the difference is between the numbers that you're going to observe when you're looking at a DOM, as we see right here, the depth of market, and a footprint chart, which is what we have right here. Okay, so before we dive right in, as always, please make sure that you're subscribed hit the thumbs up. This greatly helps the channel to get uh, more exposure on YouTube, reach a wider audience, and keep bringing you all this content. If you want a lot more in-depth strategies using all this order flow concepts and tools, you can always check out my courses as well. And check the video description where I have links to all my most popular videos here on YouTube. So, uh, when I made the footprint chart video here, which you should definitely go check it out, it's again in my description on YouTube, I gave a brief overview of what uh, a DOM was and what a footprint chart was. But I think it's a little bit confusing still for some people, so I'm just going to try to make a brief explanation. So, basically... When you're looking at a depth of market like we see here, um, this I added some extra columns because sometimes you might see it like this, but the most basic uh, DOM that you're gonna see is just like this here, basically like this highlight that I have in the middle where you're gonna have on the left side, you're gonna have the bids which are basically passive limit orders that are resting here on the left side so right now we are in i'm in the es sp500 futures market we are in the uh, globex session the market just opened right here as you can see this is a five minute chart this is a candlestick chart and this is the exact same chart but seen as a footprint so you can see that all of these candles corresponds one to here, this one is this one, this one is this one, etc. Basically from here to here is the same as from here to here, okay? And you can see right here I left the countdown timers. Uh, this one is just in seconds, this one is in minutes and seconds, but it's basically the same times this is counting down until the new candle here forms so um, as I was saying then this is the most basic DOM you're gonna see is just resting bid orders meaning resting limit orders to buy on the left resting limit orders to sell on the ask or the offer side and then in the middle you're gonna have the prices which as you know if we're on the ES market then ES minis or micros it goes up in 25 cent increments or in ticks so each tick is going to be 20.25 points each point is four ticks so that's why the scale is like this okay so the main concept that I think you need to just grasp is that when you're looking at a DOM, you're looking at passive traders. You're looking at traders that are literally just sitting here with orders waiting to be filled. But if there was no aggressive traders in the market that would just hit the market buy or sell buttons, the market would simply not move because if we just have passive traders waiting to get filled and no one is aggressive enough to lift the offer or hit down the bid, then the market would just be static. So the way markets move is, you know that for every buyer there's a seller, for every seller there is a buyer. So that means that for market to move down, 
we need to have aggressive sellers that are willing to pay down and fill in the orders that are resting below in order to get long if we have i mean to get short sorry and if we have aggressive buyers that want to get long they need to be willing to pay up in order to get filled into this resting limit orders from sellers okay and so when we are looking at a dom for example right now and i chose to make this video now during extended hours because the markets are very slow you can see there's very low volumes we have very low volumes here of orders resting if we were looking at this during like you know 10 in the morning on a regular market day when the stock market is open there will probably be like 300s 400s even almost a thousand lots resting at different levels here but as you can see right now it's pretty small orders because we're just uh into the extended hours it's almost 7 p.m so soon the asian markets are going to open and we're going to start getting a little bit more liquidity now touching on the subject of liquidity uh when you're trading you know if you're trading a market like the es uh futures is going to be a very high volume and dense market meaning that for every tick you're going to have a good amount of resting orders on the bid and the ask so even if you hit market buy or sell you're most likely going to be filled at the next available tick meaning you're going to pay down one tick or you're going to buy up one tick okay because if you choose markets that are very illiquid like if you choose for example um you know some um, market that is not very popular this is especially true for example in the crypto markets if you're trading some shit coin that has very little volume and you just hit market buy for a big order you're probably going to get a lot of slippage and this happens in all markets too you know if we're talking about futures if you're talking about like hedge funds or banks big institutions their orders are so large that they need to split them up um they'll also have iceberg orders in which this is a topic we'll talk i'm not going to dive too much into this but when you have very big players they need to split up their orders on the order book in order to not be very obvious so instead of putting a thousand lots to buy like right here and standing out and being very obvious they'll split it up into like you know 150 200 etc uh during regular market hours just to conceal their orders better okay but so the main thing to remember like i said when you look at the dom is that you're looking at resting limit orders you're looking at passive traders now i have some extra columns here just because you're sometimes going to see doms with a lot more columns um I personally don't reference the DOM that much when I am trading, but over here I have recent bid and recent ask uh, traded volumes. So basically the, the utility of having this marked, it means that it shows me the last uh, trades that went through at these levels. If market is going to pull up back into these levels, then this just resets back to zero and then it just starts going again from there. So the main purpose of checking the recent bid or ask is just to see if you see like a large size trade that went through. So for example here, if you look at 44 25 50 you see the last recent ask that means that 60 lots went in from aggressive buyers so if you see this candle right here this level right here the 44 50 if i put a line here right there you can see that those 60 lots aggressive buying that went through is right here on my footprint chart 
okay so this is showing me this large trade by far this is the largest trade from all the recent bid and asks that gone through and it was right here and you can see this was a nice breakout here so that means that market was starting to get momentum and then traders just started aggressively buying here and we had a nice big amount of contracts that lifted the offer in order to push market up further okay and then the last column that i have is the pulling and stacking right now this is not moving very much but if you will look at this on just you know like i said regular market hours this is going to be like a christmas tree this is just going to be lighting uh all the way there are going to be numbers flashing everywhere because the dom is not static these orders are constantly changing just because there's for example you know 39 limit orders to buy here doesn't mean it's going to stay like that if traders suddenly see that this might go down they're going to start canceling orders or maybe people are going to start putting in orders so the pulling and stacking here that is what is going to tell us is going to say okay here you can see there were 51 lots to sell added at 44.30 uh right here there were 23 lots that were taken out to sell at 44 30 75 etc you know and there's a ton of different reasons why traders are adding or taking away contracts and orders here but basically the main point of the dom just to hit it again for you is that the dom orders are restive passive traders that have orders to buy or to sell and are waiting to be filled by aggressive traders okay now that we talked about the dom let's now focus on the footprint chart so when you're looking at a footprint chart you're looking at actually executed uh lots or contracts that went through okay whereas this is constantly changing and everything whatever is printed on the footprint chart uh we're not talking obviously about the current candle that is being formed right now as soon as five minute passes then this candle is going to be done and then we're going to start forming our next candle just like we have here on our uh candlestick chart okay but all these candles here behind the current candle this is all these candles that we've already printed and all these numbers that you see here is basically like looking at an x-ray of this candlesticks here you're looking inside at how exactly all this uh contracts went through each candle as you know we have an open a close a high and a low for each candle and with the footprint we can see at each tick level remember each one of these lines is one tick on the price scale so at every tick level the footprint is going to show us how many contracts were traded at that level and this is the part that confuses a lot of people okay when we're looking at a dom the bids or the orders to buy are on the left and the ask or the offer the orders to sell are on the right when we are looking at a footprint chart we have to think of this in reverse because a footprint chart is showing us aggressive traders meaning these are the traders that either hit down the bid or hit up or lifted the offer so these are market orders that went through and filled limit orders to buy or sell so in this case we look at it in verse what do i mean by that well what i mean is that in this case where's my text tool this was aggressive orders to to sell right there 
and this were aggressive orders to buy okay and how do we know that well because like I said in this case it is showing us executed trades and we know that for markets in this case to move up we need aggressive sellers I mean aggressive buyers to be willing to pay up in order to get long in the market okay so in this case we can see for example if I take uh, you know this price level right here we can see it on this candle at 44.29 we had 10 contracts that went through to buy at this level and we have 79 contracts that went through to sell in this level now remember there's different ways to uh, look at a footprint chart in this case the one that we are looking at right now this is a bid buy ask footprint right here okay so we are looking at a bid buy ask footprint meaning all the bids were on the left side and all the asks were on the right side just like if we were looking at a dom chart okay so that's pretty much the idea and in this case uh, well this each candlestick you can see has a little black rectangle that is a setting I have marked this represents the point of control of each candle basically that means that was the uh, point on the chart where uh, we had the most traded volume in this specific candlestick so for example if you take this candlestick and you add up all the contracts that went through at each level you can see that right here we had a hundred and eight contracts that went through here so this is the point of control of this candle and then there's also the concept of Delta which I've talked about this um, before and I'm not going to dwell too deep into this I have videos on this on YouTube and obviously I talk about this in my courses too but basically Delta is when you take the executed uh, buys minus the executed sells so in this case you have 78 minus 30 that means that we had a positive delta of 48 on this uh, on this level here at this price on this uh, candlestick so that shows and you can see on this candle pretty much all the bids here the buys were bigger than the aggressive sales so that shows us a very strong momentum here we have um, they're not highlighted but there's a concept you might have heard of in footprint charts called imbalances when you talk about imbalances that's another thing when you talk about imbalances you're talking about you're looking at the charts in diagonal terms okay so when you look at imbalances you're gonna be reading like this why do we read like this when we're talking about imbalances well because if we have the price here in order to get long you need to buy up into the upper right in order to get short you need to hit the bid meaning you need to hit on your lower left so that means aggressive buyers are buying this way and aggressive sellers are selling this way so that means when we're looking at a footprint chart and we want to compare the aggressiveness aggressiveness of buyers and sellers then we compare the numbers diagonally like this okay and then that's how you measured imbalances and in this case when you have a situation like this 
then you can see we have a lot of imbalances. Usually, imbalances are measured in 300% by standard. That means that if you see a number diagonally that is at least three times bigger than the other one, then you have an imbalance. So for example, here we had zero contracts executed to sell here and 25 aggressive contracts to buy. So here we have a nice imbalance on this level. Okay, but that's, you know, another topic. But basically, like I said, the difference then is when you're looking at the footprint, you're looking at exactly the contracts that were executed at each tick level on the chart. You can see this on any market. You know, you can see this in futures. You can see this in crypto markets, uh, forex markets, not really on spot because it's decentralized and most of it is trade uh, over the counter. But if you look, for example, at currency futures, then you're going to be able to see this as well. But definitely futures market are the best when it comes to looking at order flow tools. OK, but basically that was the concept of the video here like i said you have your five minute chart and your footprint and then you're dumb okay so that is the difference between a dumb and a footprint on a dumb you're looking at passive traders that have resting orders that need aggressive traders to be paired up with in order to get filled and when you're looking at a footprint you're looking at executed aggressive orders meaning this is all aggressive uh trades that were filled at the various uh price levels in the uh in this case at each tick on the price scale and when you're looking at a dom orders to buy are on the left orders to sell are on the right when you're looking at a footprint the executed orders to buy are on the right and the executed orders to sell are on the left okay so that's pretty much the concept and the nutshell of the video i hope that has been useful if you have any questions let me know down below make sure to subscribe hit the thumbs up again and um yeah i hope you have a great week and i'll see you all in the next video take care